How's it going everyone? It's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the Surface Laptop Go. This is not to be confused with the Surface Go. Uh, they're different devices. One's more of a tablet, uh, something that's three in one or whatever, uh, versus one that's actually a laptop, uh, arm-based uh, laptop. This is one of those laptops that also needs a bit of understanding of its uh, market positioning. So it's very easy to compare it to what else you can get on the market and what they offer and all that kind of stuff. But the Surface Laptop Go actually has its own place on the market for those who need something who depends on cloud storage, for example, they might not need all the extra bells and whistles that a fully fledged uh, laptop that's not ARM based uh, would offer or something that offers a lot more power. So without further ado, let's get into it and see what it's all about, what you get in the box and my experience with the Surface Laptop Go. The Surface Laptop Go is the cheapest in the Surface family, yet it feels like a premium device aimed at those with cloud storage for all their files, people who like to connect to their server to work remotely, or just casual workers on the go. I would like to think that journalists, for example, or students who will mainly be browsing the web, writing their dissertations, theses, all that kind of stuff, would benefit from the Surface Laptop Go. This is not to be confused with the Surface Go, like I said already, with a detachable screen and uh, essentially a tablet uh, competing with the likes of the iPad Pro. With an Intel Core i5 processor in there and 8 gig of RAM, 256 gig of internal storage, especially with this version here, it's actually designed to do what it does best. Very efficient, the battery lasts very long, and it's very quick as well when browsing the web or opening multiple applications, multiple tabs in one go. There's also a base model with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but the eMMC storage used is not, the, it's not as fast as the SSD counterpart that we've got in this version here. So if you can afford it, I'd say step it up and go for the SSD version. Before I go a little bit further as well, inside the box, you get everything you need. So you get your charger in there. So the proprietary charger, uh, which we've all come to know with Surface uh, family now. And you also get your user manual as well. So do give that a read if you need to understand what the laptop's all about before you start using it as well. And of course you get the Surface Laptop Go itself in this nice champagne gold, uh, might not be the official color, but that's what I'm gonna be calling this gold version that looks really nice and slick as well. This is actually a beautifully designed machine and I actually love the look of it. Something that I would take out in public with pride and I love this aspect ratio, the keyboard and a lot about the device as well. In terms of ports, you get proprietary charging ports, a USB-C port and a full USB port for all your peripherals if you wanna connect old peripherals you can do so as well. You, want, you don't get a full HDMI port unfortunately but you should be able to connect to an external display using that USB-C ports that you have there. Furthermore, you also have a 3.5 mil headphone port, which is useful uh, considering the built-in speakers aren't that good, they're not that loud. And uh, where the speaker is, is also the same grill used in the Inge uh, for heat uh, dissipation. So again, although it rarely gets hot, uh, but the fan does kick off when you have a lot going on, uh, like having multiple tabs open and multiple applications open at the same time. Elsewhere, there's also a fingerprint reader built into that power button. Uh, there's a 720p webcam there, which is useful for your uh, Zoom calls. Again, this is something that people that will buy this will be using this kind of laptop for. There's no facial recognition here at all, so you have to rely on that fingerprint sensor. Again, works really well, very quick to log in, no issues there at all. The 12.4 inch pixel sense display is not quite full HD, but a resolution of 1536 by 1024. So you get 148 PPI here with a three by two aspect ratio. And as I said earlier, actually, I quite like this aspect ratio. And you also get 10 points more to touch sensitivity as well. So that screen is also touch screen if you wanna navigate uh, the applications that way. More on that design, the Surface Laptop Go as an aluminum top half uh, for the laptop lid and a polycarbonate base, uh, but it also feels very premium as well. Keyboard is a joy to type on and you have a big trackpad to help you navigate the system. It runs on Windows 10 S, uh, which is the, the slim version, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, S, uh, which in itself has its limitations to what apps you can actually run. But this isn't aimed at power users who might need the apps. Uh, you, can, you might need those kind of apps, power apps, uh, but you can still switch to a fully fledged uh, Windows 10 if you wish to do so. Although you'd be able to download a fully fledged uh, Windows 10 operating system on here or upgrade to it, for example, it doesn't mean by downloading Adobe Suite you'd be able to start editing 4K videos. So uh, in fact, there's no point upgrading to Windows 10 for full edition at all, in my opinion. But if you want something like that, you'd have to 
get a different kind of laptop, maybe another laptop in the Surface family. Overall, the Surface Laptop Go is an appealing device. Uh, I think it's actually suitable for those people that is actually aimed at. But then there's the argument of, should you just go get a Chromebook, for example? Or there's also the Honor Magic Book 14 or some offerings from Huawei in general, which you can also get for around about the same price. But in my opinion, if you're spending this sort of money on a Surface Laptop, you know you're getting a premium device and you know what you're getting yourself into rather than third party or other devices that might not offer the same sort of experience, even down to customer services. Having said that, the Honor Magic Book 14, for example, has a better graphics card. So in my previous review, which you'll see on the channel as well, I was able to run Forza Horizon uh, uh, 4 on there with no hiccups on lower settings. This laptop, the Surface Laptop Go, you can't even think uh, or imagine doing so at all, don't even try it. Buying a Surface Laptop Go as well also means you don't have to worry about battery life. There's nothing to worry about when it comes to that at all. It lasts more than a day uh, in my experience. Again, based on my kind of usage, some people it might just last a full day and then they need to charge it again. But I think it's more than enough. So that's it for the Surface Laptop Go, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. Uh, but in the meantime, if this is your first time on the channel, please do subscribe and share it as well with your friends and family or someone else that might find it useful. Uh, hit that bell notification as well so you'll be one of the first people to know every time I upload a new video up on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.